I ignored my destiny once. I cannot do that again. Even for you. I'm the only one who knows that. At least I'm the only one with the will to act on it. The Mad Titan Podcast with your host, Jay Washington. What's happening, everybody? It's me, your resident super villain, Mr. J. Washington. Thank you for joining episode seven of Mad Titan Podcast. Not to be confused with episode 91 of the Sex Jokes and Rock and Roll show. <laughs> yeah, what this is is a three. I was going to bring that up. This is a special crossover episode I'm doing with my homeboy, Tom Tran, who you heard. I thought uh, you were about to say a three way, and that would have fucking That would have been day really up. fucking awkward. Of the Sex Jokes Rock and Roll Podcast. So, a lot of the shit that you hear before, and normally on the show, we're going to do that. It's just going to get a whole lot more wild because Tom has no fucking filter, and I love it all the time. And normally I don't do the intro this way, but we're going to get straight into it. So, uh, so sit tight, buckle in. This shit's going to be a ride. And you're going to hear some crazy shit that we do here on the Sex Jokes and Rock and Roll Show. And then maybe you'll go, hmm, maybe I shall listen to this Sex Jokes and Rock and Roll Show of which you speak. Uh, Jay, welcome back to the Comma Shop Studio. Ah, man, I'm, I'm glad to be back here, man. I just wish I could just have my own key to come in this bitch every now and then. Yeah, don't, just to, don't hold your breath. I mean, I thought we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> my wife doesn't even have a key for this studio. That is, uh, that is fucking hysterical. Let's start with a segment we like to call This Week in Disappointing Our Family, where we catch up on what's been going on. What are you doing? Uh, I just was looking at my run sheet. That's all I'm doing. All right, well, I will tell you what I've been doing. Uh, <laughs> this episode is late. This is actually, we skipped last week because I got fucking sick. Again, what, what, did you, what, did you, what did you get? I had the I had the flu like a month ago or two months ago, and then I got over it. It was two weeks of me being sick, and then everybody's like, hey, did you get a flu shot? And I was like, no, I'm good. I already got sick this year. You no get, sooner did I say that than I got fucking I sick again. I refused to get that flu shot. Uh, for me, well, I didn't, and then I got sick again. I just don't. Yeah, I just The whole stigma behind it for me is like, fuck all that. Uh, for me, for the week, I was, it was a pretty decent week. It was a busy one for sure. Uh, got a chance to record the weekend binge with Mel Productions. That should be coming out soon. And I jumped back on Collider Heroes, which was dope because myself and Quay Jandro, we got a chance to inter- interview Jessica Parker, Mich- Jessica Parker Sh- Kennedy. Shut up! Shut up! Really? Yeah, Nora <laughs> from Flash. Yeah, man. If you, you, know check- lo- you know how I love sisters. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and she is so fucking beautiful. Yeah, her eyes are amazing. But she's such a cool, cool person. We got a chance to talk a lot in depth. Uh, about her getting the role, how it feels to be in the Arrowverse now, being with the cast. So all of that is up on YouTube, of course. I'm thinking about putting the audio section here on this episode, this crossover episode, for the people who don't feel like scrolling all the way through to find it. But nonetheless, it was that, and then just doing a couple shows as always, man, just trying to stay busy and, you know, building up more and more and more, just dealing with all that, and then all watching all of the shows that are back. Because Jesus Christ... The, everything's back all at the same time and, with, and legends comes back the day after we record this so it's and, like everything will be back and in january you get and then Age all of the shield and everything else so and and all of it at the same time things are going away but we will get into that during nerd yeah days. yeah let's uh let's start with a segment that uh rico and i started last week that was fun it's called the t- the bottom grossing box office <laughs> Because every show talks about the, the top, top grossing. Right. So I will give you the top five grossing movies of the week. And then you tell me how much you think the bottom three made. Okay. Okay. So to top the list so far, I'm recording this on Sunday. There's, so there's still a day left of weekend box office. Well, pretty much it's in. It's pretty much in right now. Right. These numbers are the weekend total. So um, number one in the box office, everybody knew this one. Halloween, uh, the sequel, which of is. Of course. The sequel to a, two to two yes. and they just got to wipe the rest of them away. Halloween came in at number one with seventy seven uh, million dollars. A Star is Born starring Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Nineteen point three million. Uh, Venom. Eighteen point one million. Goosebumps. Two. I, I didn't even know that was out. I, but I just barely saw uh, a okay. promo for it like this week and shit. Uh, Nine point seven million. And First Man came in at eight million. So the top five movies. Uh huh. What do you think? How much do you think the bottom three movies made? Uh, and they were. And I'm, I'm not even going to look at it because okay. I can see it in front of me, but I'm going to turn okay. away. I'm you don't say, look. I'm going to say between 20,000 okay. and 5,000. Okay, there were. I'm going to tell you what. There are 39 movies playing this this week okay. across the country. So uh, the number 37 movie, how much do you think it made? 27,000. You think it made 27,000? Okay, let me write this down because I'm going to forget. <laughs> so you think number 37. Seven, 
made twenty seven thousand. Twenty seven thousand. Thirty eight. How much do you make, think it made? Twenty five. Oh, sunshine. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and number twenty and number thirty nine. Twelve. <laughs> And you give these motherfuckers a lot of credit. Okay. All right. So the number 39, or number 37 movie, a movie called God Bless This Broken oh, Road. Oh, Jesus Christ. Which, which is the title of a Rascal Flatts song. Okay. Made $2,000. $2,039. Oh, how many screens was it on? Uh, seven. Okay. So, yeah. But still. Uh, number 38, Liliana made 1300 And number 39... A film called Bigger made five hundred and sixteen dollars. I spent more in shots last night at the bar. <laughs> Who in the, you know what? I understand that for a lot of these films, in order to be able to have them in any type of Oscar consideration, because that's all they do, they have to run into a theater. But god damn, like <laughs> that's gotta make you feel bad about yourself. That's gotta make you feel horrible, especially if you didn't even make the amount it cost to produce the film back. If you didn't make enough to cover the cost of craft services. Yeah, you didn't even cover craft services. Five hundred and sixteen dollars. So our big winner slash big loser is a movie called Bigger, actually. That's Number thirty nine with five hundred and sixteen dollars. Um, all right, let's go into the nerd news. Now, I'm a week behind because yes, like you I are said on this one, if this is your first story. Yeah, I was sick last week and then Rico, I don't know where the fuck he is. I think he's playing the foosballs or he's watching the foosballs or mm. whatever those sports people do. Um, wow. Yeah. Foot, there's football and then there's soccer. The, the foosball. Hey, I went to a hockey game yesterday and my Sabres kicked some ass. So that I care about. Uh, <laughs> CW dropped the the first photo of Ruby Rose's Batwoman. Again, this is, I'm a week old. Yeah, you're a week behind it. It's actually a pretty dope photo. It uh, looks straight out of the comic. It, it does. I will give them. This is perhaps one of the most comic book accurate costumes they've gotten right. The biggest concern everybody has is with the acting, of course. That's that's everybody's like, yo, I think I understand the motive. Who's acting? Ruby Rose. Like, I understand why they got her because she she's is a badass. A, right? it, it, uh, Didn't she? Wasn't she in a movie where she kicked Jason Statham's ass? She's or something? in the Meg, and, and that oh, doesn't okay. really. Say well, she much. she fought a big fucking shark. Oh, what the fuck ever. But uh, I don't know if you've seen this as well as that. But we also because she's going to debut in the crossover, right? She's debuting in the, the Elseworlds crossover for the Arrowverse in December. We also have behind-the-scenes photos of Stephen Amell and Grant Gustin in each other's costumes. Well, it wasn't a behind-the-scenes. No, no, Grant... there's an actual behind-the-scenes photo. No, Grant, I, yeah. No, no, oh, no. is there a behind-the-scenes yeah, photo? That's what that? I'm telling you. It just came out today. Where, where is this? Where is this? <laughs> it just came out today. Where is this? Uh, if you go to MadTitanCast.com, you can see it right there. I will show. It is the first story on the uh, website. If you scroll down right there. There is <laughs> Oliver Queen is your Scarlet Speedster and Grant and Ari Allen is the Emerald Archer. I'm not I'm uh for real Grant um Stephen Amell looks like bit like what Barry Allen should look like. No, he looks like my 1984 <laughs> Super Friends Flash you're stupid. Dude, I'll I'll fucking go grab it. I'm going to take a picture of it <laughs> and hold it right next to it. He's got the same build as my 1984. I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. But He's it's got like, that goofy fucking look on his face, And the too. crazy part is they, they didn't remake suits. These are the actual suits each actor wears, respectively. Like, they just fit in each other's suits. So Get the, the fuck out. Yeah. He fits in Grant Gustin's suit? Yeah, and Grant fits in all, in, uh, in Steven's suit. And But as you see in the background, you see Tyler Hoechlin, who plays Superman, in his regular suit. Because we saw or we saw that there's the picture behind the scenes of him in the black suit now. Right. So And there's a picture at the Kent family farm from Smallville. Yes, there is. So they're doing a lot with this one. I just the Elseworlds thing, the jumping worlds, jumping mo- well, I think worlds is one thing, but the universes, I think those are the same thing, just Our, intertwined and shit. Is his boot is that upside down? Why do I feel like No, his that's boot- exactly how the boot is. Is it? Okay. Yeah. The new me. suit is uh the new splash suit is just really fucking awkward. How do you like the new flash suit? I really don't. I it like looks it. it's so rubbery. I like it. I like it. I like the red. That's the thing that I like. The red is finally the, re- okay. the Scarlet Speedster red yes, instead of the I dark can, maroon. I can get that. The red is the red. The suit itself just looks really fucking I like weird. It. I like it. I, I guess because we've gotten so used to seeing Grant Gusty with a chin strap. Like <laughs> And yeah, that that part doesn't even bother me. I was watching. I was looking. It was it looked kind of weird because now it's not like the the hood that he had on. It's like, um, it's actually a helmet. It's a helmet, and then he's got the the 
thing that goes over his head. Yeah. But I like it. It's not bad. I mean, it's. It just, I think it takes I really me used to. I really like the red. I think that's what it. That this shade of red is more true to the Flash than in the last four seasons. I think, and that's what everybody who does like it is like. Yo, we finally got the suit because, of course, we get the suit that comes out the ring. It comes thanks out the to, ring. Yep. And yeah, you do have the red, but you know, it is what it is. He'll change. He'll change suits. He'll change again. in two seasons. He'll change in two seasons. So it's nothing really to get super excited about. Uh, speaking of the crossover, they're doing a lot for this one. They're bringing a lot of people in. Of course, we're getting Lois Lane, which I'm like, is it necessary, really? Is it? Well, Superman's already in it. And I was going to bring up this little bit of news. Lex Luthor yeah. is coming to Supergirl Season 4. Well, it's about time we see him uh, because we are we constantly keep hearing about him with Lena and Lillian, and Lex is always referenced, So, and but he's locked up. So I think if we do see him, we'll probably see him in prison or see him in a flashback of sorts no i mean if they've got mercy great have you are you caught yeah up? yeah they got mercy and otis. mercy mercy and otis are in it yeah they, but it, they're doing that to agent liberty so i think that's the way they're you know subverting lex unless they use that to bring lex in directly of course i mean they're they I, I lex is it. coming in at this point at this they point it's a lot just, of shit in these shows that's the reason just, they're just waiting to for 10 seasons in they're gonna go just take batman just do it at i don't this i point. still don't think it'll happen Really? I think that's why we have, I honestly believe within the bottom of my heart, that's the reason you got Batwoman, just so they can be like, look, we gave you a bat, shut the fuck up. They said the same thing with Superman, and Tyler Hecklin is the best Superman since Christopher Reeve. Well, well, look, we've had this whole thing of Superman doesn't get a movie, you think you have the whole Batman be Superman, Justice League shit, so it's like, yeah, you have to put him to a place where you're like, hey, be content now, Batman is going to keep going no matter what, we got Gotham and all this, so... I don't think they're going to show Ralph, actual I, Batman. We'll I, reference Bruce Wayne. We'll reference him consistently, but we won't see the Dark Knight himself. I've heard that. I had this conversation with Ralph Garman years ago at the improv. I was after, there that night. Yeah. And he what, what did Ralph say to us? There's no way the two the big two are ever going to make it to the uh, to the TV. Yeah, I, and I agreed. I right? I did. I was agreeing with him. Right. And, and what happened? Superman. We now got we Superman. Got, right. And Gotham series finale. Is going to end with Batman. Well, that's because they didn't know what the fuck they were doing with this show. Period. Well, Let's just be honest. But so I exactly, mean, which means there's an opening for Batman. To I come don't in. think, but I don't think we'll get him calling himself Batman. We'll just see him. I think that because I think there's something to the name usage versus the look. If that makes sense. No, there's no none of the, the no that makes no sense. It's fucking Gotham. It doesn't have to make sense. Tom. Right, but you're talking licensing. Yeah. Right. Where did you get that information? Because there's no precedent for them going, okay, we're going to do a show about Batman. We're going to do all his characters. We're going to put Batman in the series finale, but we're not going to say the word you're, Batman. You're going to tell me. You're, yeah, they'll put him in it without saying his name. I, I guarantee you pretty much they'll do that. Yeah, this has been this has been Gotham for the longest. The show was never supposed to be about Batman. As we Sunday, know. October 21st, uh -huh. 2018, uh -huh. 5.42 p.m. Yep. Jay Washington says there, there will be no Batman on TV screen. No, no, you'll see him. Okay, but he, he won't be referenced? He won't what be referenced as What the fuck difference Batman. does that make? That makes no sense, Jay. He's going to be on TV. Okay. And, and within a few years... With DC and Warner Brothers being a shambles the way well, it shit, is, he's coming in the fucking Titans, so it doesn't matter, right? But that's a direct, that's a direct Warner Brothers DC thing. Like that's a whole look. We need this to help further push this. It's a difference when you're doing these offshoot shows. You know what I'm saying? What offshoot shows? What offshoot shows are you talking Again, about? Again, Gotham was never supposed to be about Ben him. About Batman. yeah, I know, never, I know. But people didn't give a fuck about Ben McKenzie. I stand by that. That is the reason we had to switch the direction. Hey, they made they made it to five seasons. Syndication. That's all that fucking matters. Uh, yeah, that's true. Can't even argue with that. But you have that. Then you had Arrow because Arrow is basically Batman. So it was like because his story is basically Batman, we keep using Batman villains. We don't ever need to bring him in. And then in season six, I think it was, he finally said, hey, where's Bruce, where's right. Bruce Wayne? So it was like, okay, here's fan service. But... When it came to the crossover, like, yeah, now could we possibly do Batman because we have Superman? Like, no, we'll give you Batwoman and call it a fucking day. You don't think at this point there's no way CW is going to go, hey, you guys have been on the air for, at this point, seven years. Mm -hmm. You've already got Arrow, Flash, Supergirl. Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter. Lex is in it. 
Fucking Mercy Graves a, was a character a, that didn't even exist until the animated series. I get that. You don't even have like I mean, you don't even have fucking the Green Lantern. So for them to and that's been one that's been teased about happening more so than Batman. Because everybody kept thinking Diggle would end up being Jon Stewart. So I don't think you're going to get Batman in this CW verse. I do not. All right. We will see when you are wrong. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just the way the story. I mean, the, the door is open for it. The door has always been open for it. Nobody has doubted that. The door to bring Batman in. No one thought we were going to get a Superman on Supergirl. Which I didn't. I, I will admit, I was one of them because, and I think the reason they brought him in was to save the show. Because the show was always, season one was predicated on her constantly talking to him. And it was like, look, at yeah, some point. Texting her fucking cousin, cousin who happens to be Superman. Right. So, hey, at some point, you're going to have to just bring him in and just say, fuck it. And it's, it helped save the show when you brought him in season two and you did the things you did with him. And how are they going to end? And if this Batwoman spinoff is, happens like they hope it's going to happen with this crossover being the backdoor pilot, do you think... They're going to do a show called Batwoman about a character who is Bruce Wayne's cousin and never have I don't Batman think this one, show up. I don't think this one is. I don't think this Kate Kane is uh, Bruce's cousin. Kate Kane in this one is not Bruce's cousin. So she's just someone who's she's uh, infatuated with Batman, what he is. Right. So she's infatuated with we'll Batman. We'll say the name. We won't, we won't see the character. In the ca- <sighs> I don't think in a C- I don't think in a CW. Now, granted. There, there are rumors that Superman are, happened and there are rumors I'm about to bring that up that they are talking about giving Tyler Hoechlin his own Superman Hecklin, series Tyler Hoechlin 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 whatever they're talking about giving a dude his Superman series so that's a possibility but I, I think the only reason they're talking about that because Supergirl is out the door I, I don't think anybody understands it's hard, it. it's hard it, to watch it is hard and they moved it to Sunday I've been on watching. purpose it was on purpose yeah that's I why I think when they start it's, moving I, days I, around that's to let you know we're trying to see how how can we Justify low ratings. It's it's hard to watch. It is. I I I, I watched a lot. Uh, just did you just, watch the season premiere? I did. It's it's hard. Did you see how basically she tried to go to John Johns for help and without him saying it, and you could tell in the script it was basically saying we don't have the budget. Yeah. It because yeah. he was like, "Yo, I need your help." Well, I can't help you. Basically, yeah. we don't have the budget to do Martian Manhunter. Yeah. It's, so I think that's the reason that's a rumor for him for Superman having a show is because Supergirl is almost out the door. So it's just I I I wanna I wanna I wanna like the show and I just I can't even I mean I can't. Win was my favorite part about. And then they took him off, and he's gone. And I love Melissa Benoist, but it's it's hard to watch that show. And then they're doing the fucking the Red Sun storyline. Have you noticed with Mm. the the Russian Supergirl? Mm. I mean, they're how are they not setting up for Red Sun? Yeah, they they're all. But that's the thing, they always do. The Superman. That's the, and that's my another issue with bringing doing a Superman series because you've done all his stories with Supergirl. Yeah, but he's got seventy five years worth of stories you can do. It's there's seventy five oh, seventy six years of Superman stories. Yeah, you got a point. And the stories they keep doing are, are the big ones that everybody fucking knows already. That's what I'm saying. They're doing the big stories, right? Right, and that's what I'm saying. What do you do with Superman? You don't. The obscure stories are some like, huh? What? The bigger stories are what you want to see with Superman, but it's already been done with Supergirl. So who knows? Uh, I don't. What did you think about the Flash? Not the Flash's season premiere. Uh, not that one. Arrow season premiere. Um, what did you think about that? It's fine. It was unmemorable. I watched it <laughs> and I was like, okay, I guess uh, I guess we're, we're flash forwarding now to the island since Berlanti said we're never we're not we're done flashing back. We're done seeing Oliver on the island. Yeah. And now they're flash forwarding to and seeing it, and, and it was be- weird cuz uh, at first it was supposed to be the daughter and then all, I guess they were telling everybody the daughter and now it's William on the island. Oh, by the way, if you haven't caught up on Flash Supergirl or Arrow. We're going to spoil the fuck. Oh, yeah. You finna, I'm going to tell you. And Black Lightning. I'm going to spoil <laughs> all this shit for you. I should have I said that at the beginning. Was spoilers all over. <laughs> yeah. It's just now you have William going to Leanne Yu and Roy's there. It's like, okay, so you brought Colton Hayne back for the Flash forwards. What in the fuck is... <laughs> like, who is that under the hood then? Oh, I... I thought it was. You think it's Roy under the hood I still? Thought it was Roy under the hood. I mean, and it's, not it's, it's him under the hood now, and then it'll be him still in the flash forwards. Yeah, that's what I think. I don't know who else it could be. Maybe it's maybe it's uh, um, his sister. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I just want to say this. See if I can say it with a straight face. Yeah, but I know she's, she's in rehab again. She's in rehab again. And um, didn't want to do the show. Uh, yeah. 
Um, if let me let us know what you think. Do you think Superman's ever going to show up on the CW verse? Go to uh, you tweet mean at Batman. Us, or yeah, well, because Superman's getting his own show. The, the Berlanti verse. Yes, I feel like he's going to show up in the Berlanti verse, being you know Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, Legends, or whatever. But more than likely, um, on 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 dog on batwoman uh tweet at us at sex jokes rock what's your twitter thing mr j washington that's m-r-j-a-y you should know how to spell washington uh at sex jokes rock let us know what you think uh is uh, do you think superman's gonna show up in the berlanti verse at some point uh transitioning out of the berlanti verse did you see this cute little video the, which the, one the back the, behind the oh, scenes yeah the the Batmobile uh, on the set of the, the, new, jo- the yeah. new Joker movie and it's this is the classic this is the classic Batmobile. So, but the, here's the weird part about it because Batman doesn't exist yet. Right, Batman. That's the, I think that's the weirdest part about. So was this. was this this was was this not a set or was this like a prop for a convention or something? I'm hoping I don't. It, it makes no. It will make zero sense. Yeah, if it's in this movie because Thomas Wayne is still alive. Yeah, and if you know anything about the story, Bruce is like nine. Maybe they're just they're just jumping the shark and they're going straight to um, in uh, Flashpoint. I hope, I hope <laughs> to go. Look, I was all anti this movie in the first place. Like the director Todd Phillips, I'm cool. Joaquin Phoenix, I'm cool. But I'm like, yo, we have two simultaneous Jokers. I just don't think we need that. Yeah, but there's there are multiple Jokers in the comic universe yeah i mean if we're gonna i mean rebirth there were three there were three but we're we're establishing something else i mean the fact that we're establishing our own film universe and tv universe you you just don't this is confusing it's confusing for nerds much less the general public well, so, right much less the general public but i you know what i'll just see what they do and i guess i'll just i'll you know like i said the, the clips i'm tired of, i'm tired of seeing clips I'm tired of seeing clips. I don't want to see any more behind the scenes clips, any more shooting clips, none of that. Let this movie film and be done. Because what that does is it takes away a lot of the anticipation behind it. That's just some shit that irks me. Uh, let's jump back to the Tyler Heckman black Superman suit. What do you think is happening in the scene? Stephen Mabel posted a photo behind the scenes, him, Grant Gustin, and Tyler Hecklin. And Tyler Hecklin is wearing a black Superman suit. Now, I didn't want to say the black Superman suit because, as we know, the black Superman suit was uh, from when, after the death of Superman, exactly, the death of he Superman. comes back with the awesome fucking mullet, which I don't see here. And I'm getting real fucking tired of seeing Superman without a mullet. In these either Photoshop black suits or in this case, I'm really believing they the studio doesn't want to do the mullet. I think that's the thing. I think the 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 mullet keeps coming up, and the studio's like, "Nah, we're not going to do a mullet." But fuck them. As far as Tyler Hecklin goes in this picture, that what do you think is happening? I I'm really going to lean off the whole name of the crossover Elseworld. Elseworld, yeah, it's just an Elseworld. It's just an Elseworld thing. I'm right. just going to lean off of that, that. That's what I feel like that is, too. I mean, that and the whole showing up on the Kent farm. And if you didn't know, there was a behind-the-scenes shot of uh, the, the Arrow and Flash cast in walking down the porch of the Kent farm from Smallville, the mm-hmm. actual farm that they use in Smallville. So that was that was exciting. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to finish off the DC News with this little bit. Warner Brothers not moving forward with Ben Affleck and Henry yeah. Cavill? yeah. Yeah, I mean it's pretty we, much official. We all kind of knew that. Right? Let's just be look. Warner Brothers when Henry Cavill and Dan- Danny Garcia, who was the Rock's ex-wife, who was Cavill's manager and Rock's manager, her and Cavill wanted control of Superman. After Man of Steel, they were like, "Yo, we can't have this this way. Superman is never conflicted. We need to be able to just, you know go where the character goes, and you need to give me more money because look, I'm kind of worth it right now." Eh, I mean, yeah, he's a name right now. He's a name, and he's, he's worth it. Yeah, but he's still he's still not Tom Cruise or Chris Evans. Or, I, or, I get that. Or I, I get all that, but he's worth the money. And basically, Warner Brothers was like, "Who the fuck you think you talking to?" <laughs> well, I mean, it should be. I mean, you're, you're making the guy Superman. Exactly, the tentpole character. But that's in why your, they your shifted universe. it from Cavill to Affleck, and then after the whole Affleck controversy, they shifted from Affleck to Gadot. Godot, which one Godot. it is? Godot. Godot. Tagal Godot. And she's the, her right now and Jason Momoa are the safest characters in this entire universe. 
Yeah. Because people can say Ezra Miller is safe, but at this rate, he won't be able to film the movie because they just pushed that back to 2021 to yeah. start to possibly release. Jason Momoa is cool. You know, right now they're like, oh, he's he's Aquaman. He's what we've been wanting. Women are going to go see it because it's Jason fucking Momoa. I'm going to go see it because it's Jason Momoa. I'm going to go see it because it's Jason Momoa. You what do you think saying? of the suit? They put him in the gray, the orange and green. You know what? It's a nice look and it's a nice take on it. I'm, I'm here for it. I just hope this isn't a, is this a flashback? Is this him actually going to wear it or what is the question? You know what I'm saying? Like, is this something we're going to move forward with, with him in this or has he put it on at one point and he takes it off? Yeah, like you know all those those uh those the shots of like when Supergirl was trying on the suits like in the mm-hmm. first season she was like oh she had the skirt and she had the she had every the, different thing yeah, she had yeah. the she had the pant type jumpsuit right. right so it's like I get this is in the film but is this the oh he's going to continually use this I like it I like that it's comic accurate and it doesn't look bad it doesn't look terrible it doesn't look comic it doesn't look comic bookish it doesn't look cheesy. Right, but it's comic accurate. It's comic accurate. Yeah. I like it. I'm, I'm for it. You know? you, what would you think of that five-minute trailer? That we got? Uh, was that I, too much? I think it was way too much. I think we saw the movie. <clears throat> yeah. I think we just saw the movie in five minutes. I mean, I'll still go see it. I mean, I'm going to go see it, but I think in five minutes we saw the movie. And I don't think they should have. That's the thing. With these trailers nowadays, I think these studio heads need to realize, especially with a comic book film, people are going to go see it regardless, first and foremost. The more you show, the more you take away your potential viewers. Yeah, I mean they got the nerds already. I mean James Wan has come out and said, "Hey, this is this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is this reveals nothing about the movie." Right, and it's supposed to be super dark. This what is, is a, Aquaman? Is he, it? He said it's going to be dark. James Wan has gone on record saying it was going to be a dark film. Oh, you mean tone wise? Tone wise, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tonally, I, th- yes. I thought you meant. Like Zack Snyder, Amber, everything. Oh dark. Jesus, no. no, not that, not dark. Like, oh uh, look, I think it's gonna be dark comedy. I uh, I can see that. I mean, it, sure, it'll be dark, but I think the way they shot it, the color palette they used, the 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 fact that it's it's more. I want to say real. It was shot using fewer green screens. Than any other DC film at this mm-hmm. point. I mean that that scene where where um, uh, Amber Heard is running across the the roofs. That yeah. was clearly an actual fucking village. That was not a set. That it was, wasn't a set. Well, yeah, it was a set probably redesigned to look like the village. Also, I think that James Wan took a lot of note from what James Gunn did with Guardians. If you look at the color palettes in Atlantis, as opposed, to, you know, it's similar to the colors we saw in. In freaking Guardians and Thor Ragnarok. Not saying it's DC trying to copy Marvel for anybody who's about to get in their fucking feelings. Because you know I don't give a shit. It's just saying the color palettes are similar. That's it. But I am excited to see it. Um, I want to see more of what we got in Justice League. Granted, I felt like because of what... More I, from Jason Momoa? Jason, Jason okay. Momoa. That's right, what I You got to be mean. fucking specific. Don't yeah, say you I, want more Justice League. No, no. The why the fuck would I say? No, if I'm talking about Aquaman, I say I want to see more of what we got in Justice League. I'm talking about Jason Momoa. Ain't no fucking body else mattering in that discussion. No. <laughs> Ugh. What about that Russian family that was running around for no reason? Or the fucking tentacles? Nope. Don't need that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. When's it coming out? December 21st? December 21st. It's your Christmas movie. What's coming out next week? No, something's coming out in two weeks. What's coming out on the 5th? That I want uh, to see. The Nutcracker. We get nothing else. That's the last movie of the year. The last action comic booky movie we get. Um, Bumblebee comes out right before that, right? Yeah, Bumblebee is like right before or something okay. like that. It's probably the week before. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to Marvel news. Black- this is some shit that's upsetting me. Why? Okay, so what we're about to talk about is more photos have revealed Spidey in his spectacular suit. And he was recently on the Kimmel show right. wearing the suit. And we also have him in the black noir s type suit. I don't need to keep seeing his suits. That Let that be a surprise. Pe- again. Yeah, but it wasn't their fault. Somebody else. No, no, these are sh- professional fucking these photos. These are professional photos, but these got out after somebody else leaked them. There was somebody on the set who shot a bunch of photos. I didn't see the leaked one. I just saw yeah, the professional. There were a bunch of bullshit iPhone photos. Oh, I just saw all were, the pro ones. Were, yeah. yeah, they were leaked before and they looked like shit. And everybody's like, is it a stealth suit? Is it the Venom suit? Is it because he was up on a Ferris wheel? It was shot from far. Right. All you could see was black and you could see his white eyes. Right. And everybody's like, what is this suit? 
they a bunch of those leaked because of these people on set who clearly aren't fucking signing NDAs. Because the last time I moved, Man, I worked you on will a, fucking get your ass sued to shit. Yeah, so a bunch of those fucking pictures leaked, and then Marvel was like, "All right, well, it's fucking out now, so we got to we got to yeah. put out the the best picture, Fuck. or else it would it, it would just be." The next year of people going, what is this fucking bullshit black suit? Why is he on a Ferris wheel? Because the first fucking photos we saw of um, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal as, as Mysterio, Mysterio was a fucking shot from somebody standing on a roof with a telephoto yeah. lens. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, these pictures are going to leak, and it's not the studio's fault that they're leaking. So they got to come not, out with these and say, okay, look, I would rather this let is this what it is. If I'm the studio, though, I understand. Like, if it leaks, let it leaks. If it goes around, if it's like, yo, what is this? Let that go around because that brings more anticipation and speculation for the film. You don't have to give this shit away. It's about quality, man. It's, it, it's no, no, it's, no, no, no. You're gonna get get that later after. Drop that shit after the. You put some of that shit in the trailer. Put a glimpse of him doing something in a spectacular suit, doing something in the stealth suit, in the uh, black armor one. Do so, do those in the trailer. And then release these steals. Don't just keep just saying for the sake of. Uh, or how about people on, on the internet stop fucking leaking this shit oh, and let the too. fucking studios do their job? Well, the problem because is because they got they've got to do this is what this is is fucking uh, this is damage, damage control. control. Yeah, because yeah. that shit got out because some some shithead with a phone took the picture, put out a blurry bullshit photo, and now the studios got to go into damage control mode. That's what this is. As a business owner, as the owner of a production company. I understand promotion wise what you have to do to get a product, whether it's a film or a TV show or a comedian or a musician or a band out. You want to put your best foot forward. And when Absolutely. the fucking general public goes out and leaks shit before you plan to, then then you can't control True. you can't control the I, I narrative. I, I completely agree with you with so that. So to control the narrative, I they've just, got to do it. I just because I feel like this with him, his suits, these are surprising. And yes, I get the damage control. That part of me is like, maybe it's just lighting. Maybe they're going to do something in post with this because it looks like it could just be a dark. No, no, that's look. a spectacular suit. Oh, yeah. That's a spectacular suit. Um, I think I think Tony Stark has made him a bunch of them now, just like he's made Iron Man suits. I think that's what it is. Um, I think the stealth suit is the one that he made him that says, hey, this is going to be this is a suit that's reminiscent to the piece. The, the first thing you did, but I've upgraded it, blah, blah, blah. So I think that's what that is. But. I like that it's got the Steve Ditko esque yes. feel to it. I, I love it. That's the one thing I that's the one thing I will say about the Marvel suits. And even when we just saw with Aquaman, they try to keep it as accurate to the artist as they can. Yeah, because the fucking these studios are realizing, look, we can't keep fucking with the source material because people are gonna get <laughs> real are mad at really it. Really mad if you change the source material. So I mean I'm happy for it. I, I just can't wait to see it again. I think we'll probably get a trailer a teaser or something before the year's over with. Uh, what do you think is going to drop? What do you think they're going to attach the trailer to? Oh, what's up, Keira Knightley? <sighs> Shit. I think they might attach this to... I think both this and Event A4 will get attached to Captain Marvel for sure. But I think we'll get the release. We'll get an A4 trailer probably in the next couple of weeks because it's been rumored to come out pretty soon. I think we'll get something for that because we'll get a trailer. Cool, but it's going to be heavy Captain Marvel. I, I guarantee you. We're going to get an A4 trailer, heavy Captain Marvel. We'll get a bit of Spider-Man, but not too much because Spider-Man is at the end of next year. And so if you start putting, if you put too much Spider-Man out here, you you risk burning out Captain Marvel and A4. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I think that's when, I think we'll get it at A4 Cap as in A4 Fantastic. Uh, you know what? Here we go again. Because we were, you know, that shit didn't pan out in the venture. Yeah, I know. It's a good thing, too, because it was really hard to find those, <laughs> those Eddie Murphy suits. I looked. I, I spent way too much time. And, and, and I'm not going to lie to you. When I was in the screening for Infinity War, I was at that very last second with the Samuel L. Jackson with the pager. I was like, oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. <laughs> yeah, someone was about to goonie goo goo in my backyard. Uh, all right, um, more Marvel news. Thanos, uh, Marvel has uploaded Thanos special stencils for Halloween that you can put onto your pumpkins. Which I am a fan of. Uh, I am very excited to do this. I normally don't get pumpkins because I don't have the time for it, but guess what I'm doing this year. Also, big news from Netflix. First, Luke Cage or Iron Fist got canceled, and now Netflix has announced that Luke Cage will be canceled as well. Now, what do you think is happening here? So, one of two things. Everybody's automatically speculating it's Heroes for Hire. They're going to just go ahead and condense the two into one series, which is possible. I think it's Disney and Marvel snatching up all the content slowly but surely. 
they've already said the movies were gonna come off and they're not putting any new ones on there so don't expect to see ant-man and the wasps on netflix don't expect to see captain marvel eventually on netflix black panther was the last one you're getting as far as a new film i think disney is getting ready to load up for disney play and yes we might get heroes for hire over there but i think i think it's not done done I will say I was talking to Chael Hadari Coker, showrunner for Luke Cage, and he was like, I did not Name drop. All right. I mean, you know, I can drop some more of you when we go to the Black Lightning set. Mm. All right. <clears throat> uh, he was like, he had for- no expectation for this. He didn't know. Really? Well, At all. Well, two came off with such overwhelming positive compared to season one reviews. Except that last scene. Oh, God, that hurt me. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, you know, what, the Tilda Johnson, the reveal, the Nightshade reveal? No. Or the Luke in the uh, club? Luke in the club. Well, it's comic book accurate. I know, but. You know, so, you know, that one is like, but I could see them doing Heroes for Hire because it would, you know, it helps build up Iron Fist even more. Okay. Because season two was pretty decent for, for, for the most part. Season two was decent. I haven't watched it. Still don't care. I know a lot of people who didn't even bother. I just I, I found out and I was like, really? Okay, well. Yeah, I know a lot of people who were like, no. I'm gonna go rewatch Stargate SG One, which that I'm is so fucking hysterical. Five seasons into it, uh, it's it's decent. I just think they may be going. Could it be the Heroes for Hire? Possibly, but I do think we're either looking at them going to Disney Play or the Marvel streaming platform. Because what I've heard is they're planning on giving Marvel some because Marvel has already content. All the shows are already, right? Yeah, De- well, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Deadpool is R-rated, and don't forget, there is still a lot of buzz about them putting Moon Knight into development. If they put Moon Knight into development, that is for sure R-rated no matter what. I think Marvel's been playing the long game. I think I think Marvel and Disney have been playing the long game with Netflix, and intentionally they made Iron Fist dog shit. I don't think so they, they could, did. Listen to me. Okay, okay. I think intentionally they did a shitty first season of Iron Fist, and they got progressively better. And then second, they, they contractually had to do a second season, and everybody was like me. I was like, eh, I don't fucking care. And now Marvel's like, oh, what was that? The, the ratings weren't good? You didn't get the, the – okay, we'll take all that shit back. Oh, hey, guys. I guess we're going to put all this shit on the Disney stream service. <laughs> I, I can fucking and, see that. And check it out. Check it out. We're doing Heroes Fire. Oh, fuck you guys. Right in the fucking face. Right in the goat. <laughs> Fucking goat face. Just I love how he was like, ah, oh, fuck you guys. I think you're going to get I Heroes think, for Hire and Daughters of the Dragon. I think, I think Kevin Feige was playing the long game this whole time. Hey. I know he has nothing to do with it, but I think in the back. Do you ever hear that story about the guys who wrote Civil War when they were writing Civil War? The uh, This was on the, the Fat Man on Batman podcast with Kevin Smith and uh, Mark, Mark Bernard. Bernard. So they had the writers of Civil War on. And they were like, hey, so, and Kevin and Mark were like, hey, so how much input does Kevin really have? He goes, he says stuff without saying stuff. And they're like, give us an example. Well, we, we're, you know, writing Civil War, and we were, and we were breaking the scenes, and um, Kevin just walks in one day and goes, hey, guys, with the Spider-Man hand thing. And they're like, really? He goes, yeah, just, just, just do that. And, and they're like, oh, oh, okay. Like, because the, the, the story beat with Spider-Man was supposed to be Ant-Man. Like they, that was going to be really? Ant-Man and they had like backloaded. That's how that character was going to be like, uh, backloaded into yeah. the movie. And then Kevin, this is the fun. This is one of the funny, like in my head, it was the funniest scenes I ever imagined. They were like, yeah, Kevin just pops his head and goes, Hey guys. And does the Spider-Man fucking web slinger <laughs> thing. And they're like, really? And he's like, yeah, just, just do that. And then fucking walks away. So I think Kevin Feige's got his like fucking, uh, Illuminati fingers in everything. It's just like, hey guys. Well, you know he scared. does in the uh, Spider Verse, the Spider Sony Verse, the into the the the, Ven- the Venom Verse. I mean, with with Venom and all that. No, he had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Here, listen to this. He had nothing to do with that, and it it, it shows. <laughs> so the, he didn't have anything to do with the film as a whole. So when the announcement was made that they were gonna do Venom on its own and all these other things. When Amy passed, somebody asked her about Spider Man. Yeah, I saw that. And then Pascal, and then Kevin Feige goes in the back like this bitch talk too much. Well, the look on his face when she said that, you can see he was it. like, "Bitch, what are you? Why would you saying? do this?" So Tom, remember, I don't know if we talked about it. Tom Holland was in Venom. He had his cameo. That's why Ruben Fleischer kept telling everybody Spider Man is not in Venom. Peter Parker was, but was he in it? Yes, they cut his he they cut his scene out when Marvel and Kevin Feige then watched the cut of Venom. They told Sony, take him out. Huh. Remember, it's 40 minutes also. It's 40 minutes total that's missing. Yeah. That's 40 funny. minutes total. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
But I, I do agree. Kevin Feige know what the fuck he doing. Kevin Feige be like, hey, you know what? Just do this. And you be like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, it'll work. It'll work. Yeah, just, just trust me. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I'm um, kind of sad that I'm going to have to fucking get another streaming service now. I think that's a lot of people's real frustration. <sighs> you got to keep, you got to get more and more. Well, I was talking to a friend yesterday about Did you get DC this. Universe? I have access to it. Okay. I don't have it. I have access to it. I refuse to pay for the that service. Yeah. Uh, just and it's no, it's no disrespect to DC. It's just like I don't need it. What the only thing I would get it for literally would be Titans and Doom Patrol. It's not a lot. All of that content I don't care for. I can watch it until they start pulling shit off Hulu or whatever. I can still watch. What it. you don't want to watch Birds of Prey? <laughs> I, I the it. old series, the yeah. live action birds. Man, yeah, fuck. it's on there. I know it is. Fuck you. That so have you watched Titans? Flash. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I just finished the second episode. What do you think? It's fine. It's fine. I watched the. I watched. The, I saw your tweet about the the premiere. <laughs> I was like, I watched it. I watched that before I saw your tweet. I was like, it's fine. It was. It was like Solo. It's fine. <laughs> it's a show, huh? I, I left Solo. I was like, all right. Well, it's, I guess it, it did its job for two hours. It's I guess just like the Titans. Thing, the thing, I wasn't a Titans guy. That's the thing. Like, okay, when Titans was big. I was in the army running around, jumping out of airplanes, uh, fighting our country. Accomplishment wars. drop. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of busy. <laughs> being, fighting for your fucking freedom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when Titans was big, I was off uh, fighting wars and getting my dick wet. Uh, not in that order. but <laughs> So I wasn't a Titans guy. So I'm watching the show going, all right. I mean, I just watched the Hawk and Dove episode. Which I, I enjoyed that Alan uh, Richson, yeah, Richson, who was Aquaman in Smallville, Bill is, is the fucking Hawk. Yeah. Uh, I dug that. Oh, by the way, uh, 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 Minka Kelly's. Minka Kelly is Dove. Her, her wig, fucking atrocious. That is atrocious. <laughs> it is, I'm a dude, and I'm looking at that going, that is the worst shit. Which one's worse? Minka Kelly is Dove's wig or Sarinda Swan is Medusa in Human's wig? Yeah, but that's all CGI. <laughs> that's no, fucking... no, no. Before they, oh, before they, when, 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 before they made the hair move. Huh. Now. Ooh, that is a good question. <laughs> before they Which made the one hair... is worse? Which one is worse? Because I was, I just watched Hawk and Dove like literally two hours ago. I'm just, I, I had the day off and I'm just binging on everything right now. There was a scene where uh, spoilers. If you haven't watched the second episode of Titan, she, I, I, it's not a spoiler. Something happened and she's laying on the ground. Mm. And you can see under, you can see one of her dark hairs, her no! real dark hairs, very ha clearly dangling under the blonde wig, oh, very clearly. Jesus. And I'm like, this is, is I mean, it looks terrible in general. Oh, and it just looks worse when you can see her real hair hanging out from the thing. I just so, don't. So, so there's another question. I will post this on the Sex Jokes and Rock and Roll website, sexjokesandrockandroll.com. Uh, or on the, our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Tom Tran. Uh, which, which wig was worse? Minka Kelly as Dove? Or Sarinda Swan as Medusa? <laughs> in, uh, in The Immortals. In Humans. Uh, in Humans. Um, I, I, guess I, was, I have some The Immortals on my brain for some reason. Um, Henry think, Cavill. Yeah. Um, it was terrible. Her wig was terrible. Other than that, it's fine. Is it $75 for the year fine? No, but my wife works at Warner Brothers, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, I didn't have to pay for that shit anyway. <laughs> Which um, I, I miss you and your wife, by the way. I haven't hung out with you and Ken in so far. I miss long. her too. She's not even here. I, I know she's not. She's, she's somewhere. I saw some pictures on the internet or whatever. Philadelphia. Or uh, we, were, we were talking about Marvel, Daredevil season three. I'm watching it right now. I'm Where are three, you at? Three, three episodes in. Oh, my God. I'm they, done. They just – are you done? I've been – so luckily – I just – they just introduced uh, Bullseye. Yeah, he's so – He'll never become it in this show. What? Fucking spoilers, motherfucker. Well, you know, just so you don't get your hopes up and be like, what the fuck and be mad at me later. He doesn't become Bullseye by name. But what he does. I, look, I saw the scene, the pizza scene. I'm like, this motherfucker is a creepy ass. Yeah. What do you? Because he told the doc right, he knows right. everything. You were like, wait a minute. What? And then you right. watch. Spoilers <laughs> for Daredevil season three. If you haven't. At it's least got episode this, three. It's if episode you ain't three. seen that, you need to get um, your shit together. Yeah, like I heard, and here's the thing: when he was talking to the doctor about mm. that, and as a uh, a combat veteran myself, and somebody who has had who who struggled with post traumatic stress, and who has had to go see psychiatrists and psychologists about combat action, mm -hmm. that conversation was very. It hit a little home 
for okay. me because I've had those conversations where the doctor's like, look, we just got to talk about this so we can fucking finish this. And he says exactly what the doctor wants to hear. And to me, I've had that conversation. I'm like, yeah, everything's fine. We're happy. Fucking I'm not drinking anymore. Blah, blah, blah. Doing good and damn well. Yeah, you're doing everything's everything. great. And this was before I actually quit drinking after I uh-huh. quit smoking. This is like just a few years after I got back from Iraq. So I've had that conversation mm-hmm. and then I'm listening and I'm like, that's what I, that's, that's head on. That's, it's, it's dead on. He, and then the fucking pizza scene happens. I'm like this creepy motherfucker <laughs> right here. I'm thinking, and then in my head, I'm like, have I ever sat out a pizza place eating pizza out of a van with, watching with the gym? same with the same <laughs> <Right>. bites? <laughs> she fucking I was like, have I ever done that? I don't think I ever, like. I started questioning myself. Did you see? Did you pay attention when the shootout? How he, you know, say how he killed all the mogs? How he was just yeah, like, yeah. like he's so pinpoint accurate. Yeah. yeah. What well, I, I mean, love about scary. Daredevil is we didn't have, with the exception of. And I'll go to the whole freaking Netflix universe, with the exception of really Matt, I guess, Jessica and Luke, you don't have enhanced individuals. Like, I mean, you don't, yeah. he, you just, those are the enhanced ones. Yeah, yeah. He's fucking just a pinpoint marksman. He's not a mutant. He's yeah, not enhanced. He's an FBI sniper. He's just a uh, fucking, but he's a, yo, the, when you get to episode 10 or 11, oh, God damn it. You'll, you'll get some more into it. You'll love it. So I mean, well, I'm downloading them because I got to fly to Ohio because uh, um, accomplishment drop. I'm being inducted into a museum this weekend. For uh, what? Uh, the museum, U.S. the Museum of U.S. Military Veterans or the U.S. Museum of Veterans Memorial and Museum. Uh, it's going to be me and uh, who's that guy? Colin Powell. I'm going to be there with, uh, and I'm getting <laughs> interviewed for the. Um, oh, I can't say yet. Okay, you just I can't say. It. But I'm going. I'm going to be. I'm in, an, I'm in, a, in, a, in an exhibit that's going to be in this museum in Columbus, Ohio, and I got to go out there for the uh, the grand opening next weekend. So I'm downloading all of the yeah the uh, things for um, all the episodes of Daredevil onto my iPad so I can watch it because it's a long flight. But I, uh, funny story about that. So they called ahead. me and they're like, "Hey, can you can you come out for this grand opening uh, on the 27th?" And I was like, "Ah, oh, my band is playing that night." And the guy goes, you know you're going to be in a national museum, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, this, this is not my first, man. This, 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 is like, <laughs> this is like my third. And he goes, what? I'm like, yeah, you guys are my third museum, like my third national museum that I'm in. He goes, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, man. Have you not looked at my <laughs> like, like, fucking Instagram page? Like, I'm, I, I'm in three museums. He's like, oh, oh, okay. I was like, you know, hold on. Click down the internet. I'm like, and, and I'm like, my Buffalo Sabers are playing in Columbus, Ohio of that you night. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? The band can do a four piece. I'll let them play. <laughs> I will come to Ohio for your museum opening. Who and do I gotta do a thing to- with? Colin Powell. Okay, you just keep me away from the general, and then we'll, I'll go do your thing, and then I go in my fucking hockey game. So I'm, I just saw the Sabers beat the Kings yesterday. I just, I, for those who don't know Tom Trent, Tom is a diehard Buffalo Sabers fan. He's originally from Buffalo, New York, and this motherfucker book shows. Solely based on where the Sabers are playing, I had a I had a whole tour <laughs> based booked around. in 2014 based on what cities the I was going to be near that there was going to be a hockey game playing, and then that the fucking league fucked me on that. But that's a story for but, another time. But back to Daredevil. Anyway, back yeah, to Daredevil. So I'm going to watch you're, the rest of the series. You're going to enjoy it. it. It's they do the born again angle justice. Okay, and things that you are hoping to see, you might not see. But they acknowledge it, and it's not a cheesy, campy way they do it. It's not a fan service way. It's a, hey, we know about this. We just can't do it the way you want us to do it, if that makes sense. It'd be so, like the Iron Spider and unmasking yes, Peter in Civil War. Absolutely. Yeah, so they do that a lot. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio was Wilson Fisk. This so motherfucker good. is the kingpin. He's so good. He is the kingpin. I hope he dies in a white suit. I mean, in a peaceful way. Not like, a, <laughs> I mean, like, I hope when he dies, it's in a white suit. And they Yo, just... those white suits you just saw in the trailers. Does he, does he, no, because he's still in prison by three, right? He is still in prison, but there's like those little hallucinations where he's wearing Yeah, it. where he's yeah, wearing yeah. it. But Matt but has him. Yeah. When he gets out, because we all know he gets out. Yeah. When he gets out, when he has the suit, when you see those suits, you're like, good God yeah. damn. It's like the first time I saw uh, Michael Clark Duncan as, yo, as Kingpin. And when the white suit, I got a nerd boner. I did too. It was fucking I didn't think dumbness. anybody, I'll be honest, I didn't think anybody would be able to do him justice after Michael Clark Duncan. No matter how, how people feel about the Daredevil movie, 
Michael Clark Duncan was that's, amazing. That's, it was amazing. And then that's, when they said Vincent D'Onofrio, I was like, okay. The guy from Men in Black? Or really? Not even that. I was like, you mean Gomer Pyle from Full Metal Jacket? Yeah. That's what I said. And then I was like, okay. And then season one happened. I'm like, I see what they're doing. Uh-huh. He started becoming the kingpin in season two. And then in season three, he is the kingpin. He is the fucking kingpin, and I'm so with it. So it's it's a good season. Um, this one, this is the one that if they announce it, I was already hurt with the Luke Cage announcement, but I know what they're going to do with it. If they cancel this shit and with no plans, I'm like, man, fuck my life. I told you, long game. Kevin Feige's yeah. got the long game plan. Well, that's Jeff Loeb. Really. That's <sighs> Jeff Loeb a lot. Jeff Loeb plays a long game, too, for Marvel TV. Because also coming this year, uh, well, is it going to be this year or next year? Whenever it debuts. You might see it in Runaways, I'm not sure, but you will get a Runaways Cloak and Dagger crossover. Hmm, I haven't watched either yet. You haven't? I haven't. I'm still, I'm still so, behind. So the Runaways, it was a slow build. I know. Build. It's, it's, I that's know. The, the other thing I heard. It's like, it's a slow. I'm but like, they, they're, 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 they've ran away now, so they're gone. All right. Cloak and Dagger worked from Jump. Okay. Cloak and Dagger worked. So, I mean. All right, fine. Oh, I got uh, some more Marvel news for you. I don't know if you heard. Okay. Uh, You can pull it up on the computer. The Lego toys have done it again. Lego Avengers 4 toys have given away a spoiler. I didn't put it up on the site yet. Okay. But the Lego Avengers 4 toys have given away a spoiler. It's not a real big spoiler, but it's like, shit, this, they are going to do it. And we all kind of knew it. It shows you Hawkeye is Ronin now. Well, yeah, we all knew that. Yeah, but like it wasn't, we hadn't seen the picture picture to, to fully confirm it 100%. You know, it was always like, if it, will it? It's official now. Yeah. So... You know, you get that. Uh, Good job, Lego. Lego does it for everything, though. Every like and they don't you, give a fuck because they have all the money. They did it. They did it for Infinity War. They let you. They let you see the Iron Spider legs. Like you, first of all, if you didn't know the Iron Spider was coming, you're a goddamn idiot. Uh, <laughs> you got that. You got the look of Ebony Mao. You got the look of the cannons. Oh, did you see the picture? Uh, the proton cannon shows up in A4. They think it's the proton cannon. It's, they, there's, there's been no confirmation. I am, I am not, I'm, I'm not one of those like. As soon as I see it, I, that's what I think it is. I've been in this business too long. I've been in this business far too long. I, there's, there's so much misdirection. Oh, absolutely. And all that shit comes out. I'm, it's like, it's like the guy that thinks every weird sound in the forest is Bigfoot. I'm like, look, <laughs> slow down. I believe in Bigfoot and Yeti. I don't think. I don't think two birds fucking and farting at the same time sounds like Bigfoot. Just relax. Just like, like I've heard two birds fucking and farting at the same time. I was, okay, I just want everybody to know I stopped and looked at the fucking wall. Like, is there a TV camera here? Am I being punked? I saw the picture of the, what they think is a photo. We'll see. We'll see. I believe it is. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be mad if it is or not, but that's pretty much it. Have you started, have you watched Black Lightning? Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. And you know how I feel about black people. I love you. Um, I I said, first of all, <laughs> the way you had to uh, the preface this shit uh, gets really fucking weird. Listen, I dated nothing but black women for four years. Best time of my life. Um, <laughs> you, I just want to say this, and this is how much I love Tom Tran. I dated black women for four years, but I married a tall, blonde hair, blue eyed white woman. Whitest, blondest woman on the planet. I'll tell you what, when I married her, my family's like, we did not see this coming. Legitimately, this is quite a surprise. I mean, Ken is a sweetheart, but it was like. Um, and she knows, she knows, she knows, she knows, she knows how much I love sisters to the point one year I went on the road, I came back, she had a weave, like a legit weave. Did you know that? There's a photo of us at the army ball. I'm in my uniform. She's got long hair. It's a weave. It's a straight up weave. Like she had it done while I was gone on the road. But, uh, with that, <laughs> <laughs> that's a real thing. If you go to my Instagram page, there's a picture of us at the army ball in I think 2014 and Jesus. she's got a long hair and a weave. But go ahead about your black lightning. <laughs> Listen. More than anything, it's a suit. I can't get over the suit. I just, I can't. The suit's terrible. I know you were just on the set, and I know you're talking. I just, I can't, I can't. I watched six or seven episodes of the first season. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I can't. It's, I can't do it. <laughs> Maybe it's the suit. I don't know. Nothing is hooking me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, it's not grabbing me. It's not, it's like Supergirl. Like, I want to like that show. I'll show you a close-up of the suit, too, I'll, just to make you feel mad. <laughs> I want to like the show, but I can't. <laughs> I can't. I've tried, Jay. I tried. Yo, admit, this is how much... Th- listen, I wrapped House of Pain's Jump Around last night 
during a song. <laughs> um, there are several also, things. There's several things I want to bring about that. There's all kinds of wrong stuff with that <laughs> sentence, and I understand. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> like, you, this is this is almost, this has turned into like one of my who, white friends who's like, "Listen, I'm not racist, but however, right? Because <laughs> shit, um, I just I can't I can't get into the show, Jay. I can't. I, I tried. Oh, I fuck. tried. I watched. I watched that show, The One Hundred, and thought I hated the characters. It turned out I just hate teenagers. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just a suit. You'd have never loved the fucking uh, Power Rangers. Did I hate suit. teenagers? I didn't. I did not like the Power Rangers. I was like, this is a fucked up Voltron live action ripoff. So here's the. Uh, so I'm showing Tom Tran pictures of the suits. Uh, just scroll back and forth. So yo, if I see your dick, I'm throwing this at you. <laughs> No, my dick is not in need of Fucking either. tell me to scroll back and forth on your phone. What is wrong with you? No, this is in my uh, OneDrive that I show people all the time, so I know my dick's not in there. Um, this motherfucker right here. I know my dick ain't in those photos. But nonetheless, like- Oh, this, there it is right there. Yeah, that's a suit. It's next to the tweezers. All right. What? I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is clearly not my dick. I don't know. When there would be no other dick with, it, with tweezers in my phone. But nonetheless, um, the suit, I get it because a lot of people talk about it. You know, the LED lights that look like it's on it. Uh, I actually was talking to Cress Williams when I was on the set of Black Lightning and was asking, is he getting an upgrade? Because most of the characters typically get upgrades. He's hoping for an upgrade because he says the suit is so uncomfortable. So, I mean, we'll have to see what the fuck happens. <laughs> if that's a reason, that's not a reason, though, to uh, turn off, be turned off. Okay, it's, it's, I think the suit is the manifestation of, why I I can't get into the show. It's not that I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I just can't get into it. Nothing is hooking me. Like I I'm I watch and I'm like, what all right. You, what yeah, do you want from? I guess, I, what do you want from any of the CW shows? The 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 superhero shows. I want I want those those three H's that Berlanti and fucking Kevin Smith are always talking about: heart, humor, heroics. I'm not getting a lot of humor from it okay that is something you won't get that much of there is there's plenty of heroics and the heart like i don't i don't i'm not getting it i'm getting a lot of whiny teenagers who 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 are defying their parents and and one who's who just like they're teenagers first of all i just fucking hate teenagers i haven't spoken to my niece in (laughs) probably like three years she's a great kid very smart I just I can't stand him once I get past like fucking fifteen. I just I can't. So you'll talk back to her when she turns twenty. Yeah, when she's twenty one and out of college, I'll fucking I'll unblock her from my iPhone because she's blocked right now. I don't I don't take messages from her. You are the pettiest motherfucker. Yeah, I think this I've is ever- true. <laughs> once they get past eleven, up until like it's I was like fuck, I got no time for you. Your level of petty, sir, it it surpasses mine it's, on that level. First, I mean it's it's based in high school. Listen. I when I left the army, they're like, "Hey, do you want to go teach at the at West Point, the the military academy?" I was like, "No, because I hate teenagers. I hate them as they're becoming adults. I hate them as young adults. I hate them <laughs> up until the point. I just I hate kids. There's a lot of kids on that show. You know what? That's the thing. That's the reason. Oh, I think we just talked it you out. Just hate I think kids. we just I fucking I, hate. I just became kids. your fucking therapist. That's a I I can't <laughs> I can't." I can't with the fucking kids. I can't. I don't fucking care about kids. So listen, let me, let me listen. ask this question. This is how much I don't care about kids. Okay. There's an engineer at my radio station whose name is Tom. He and his wife are having a baby. One of the producers heard Tom is having a baby and came up to me and said, congratulations on the baby. And I said, fuck you in your fucking face. I was so angry at the thought of me having a child. I was like, you go the fuck to hell. So what happens if your wife accidentally gets pregnant? Listen, then I'll be a man. <laughs> <laughs> and I will take care of this child. I won't love it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but my wife also is at a point where like she doesn't want kids right now either. I'm just at the point where I almost don't ever want them at all. And I feel like, you know what? Maybe that's part of the reason why I don't like Supergirl. Cause what what the fuck does that happen? She's basically a child trying to become <sighs> like I just I can't I can't with the whininess and the emotions. What have I always said about Supergirl? 
Less talky talky, more <laughs> punchy fighting, punchy. Yeah, more punchy punchy. Less fucking talky. I don't care about your fucking emotions. Use your heat vision on somebody and burn someone's dick off. Less fucking talky talky, more punchy punchy. And maybe it's because of all these kids. <laughs> Listen, I think Cress Williams is a fantastic actor. Yes. I like him. I fucking can't stand the suit. But all the fucking kids and all their fucking emotions I just fucking don't care. And maybe that's why I'm not connected what with the show. What if get a bunch of kids to hug you and tell you we love you, Tom? I'd punch all of them. <laughs> also, kind of why I don't like... Here's the thing. Maybe the reason I'm, I'm uh, ambivalent to Titans <laughs> is because Dick has already grown up. Which is weird. He's a right. He's a cop. Raven fucking, is fucking like 14. <laughs> Right, but at this point, she's she, she, she's and she, she's the part of the show. I'm like, I don't fucking care. Like, Dick's growing up. He he was fucking. He was literally fucking Dove, uh, Starfire, and Starfire is fine as fuck. Um, <laughs> now I feel about sisters. Uh, uh, Hawk and Dove. They're grown. They're adults. Like this is an adult yeah, world. Yeah. The least interesting part of that show for me is Beast Boy. He's, he's, I've only seen him for fucking three seconds at the end of the first I know, episode. Which I thought, which I really, I'll get into that in a second. Go ahead. But like the least interesting part of that show for me is Raven. Like, I don't care. And maybe it's because there's so, and here's the thing. I get what they're, if, if this is what they're trying to do. What if, do you think they're doing? With Black Lightning. I think if they're setting it up so his daughters, because Chris Williams. Okay. Look at the general overall demographic of CW actors. Mm-hmm. They are like 25 He's the oldest, to 30. Yeah. Chris Williams is 107. <laughs> <laughs> but he's black, so he looks like he's 40. <laughs> so What the fuck am I going to So if they are setting up, <sighs> which would be brilliant, if they're setting up for the first couple seasons, like Chris Williams, Black Lightning, and his, his daughters already have the powers, and they set it up so they take over, and then boom. And that's and then they 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 take that 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 demographic they that they that grew up with the show you like the the fans that came up to it and they're like oh yeah we kind of identify with these girls uh -huh. these teenagers teenagers on the show well the daughter well, the oldest daughter is an adult <sighs> no the she is but she acts like a twelve year old a whiny bitchy twelve year old I just want to I have my opinions dad I don't give a fuck about your opinions. <laughs> More punchy, punchy. <laughs> I'm I'm googling how to find help resources for Tom Tran. Listen, I think your question was correct. I want heart, humor, and heroics. Well, here's the thing with Black Lightning. It is there's no humor. It is humorless. So here's why. It is here's, humorless, like my ex-wife. No humor. Yeah, you sound like much shit. So is mine. But here's the thing with Black Lightning. And this is again name drop. Talking to Selena Kiel. It is a family drama. With superpowers. I don't need no family dramas. I got a family and I got drama. I don't need to watch that shit. That's why I don't have kids. Because I'm responsible <laughs> enough to pull out. Because I don't want any more drama. Yeah. 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 I mean. Maybe that's why I don't care. Like, I don't. I don't. I just. I don't give a. F I mean, I but you ain't I never can't. just stayed in. Like, I can't, pulling out can't. always is cool. But staying in just feels like glory. And if you married, like, yo. Can we both work on taking care of this every now and then? Or I get a supply. Of Listen, I've, I've I've rolled that dice. I've gambled, and you know what? Eighteen and zero, bitch. I'm still <laughs> still at the top of my game. Yeah, I mean, anywho, anywho. I just I can't get into it. I want to like the show, just like I want to like Supergirl. Mm -hmm. But it's just, just so. I do think, and I'm not saying it, talking. and I don't think, and, but I think the thing with that is there is a demographic that will, like you said, they'll gravitate towards it. Right. And you probably, like you said, because of what you want out the shows, you do get the more punchy punchy out of Arrow. More, you get right. some, you get I get humor. the more laugh, I get more humor out of Flash. Flash. I get a shit ton of that out of Legends. Legends. You get both. And then Supergirl, you get talky talky emotions. Yeah, which is why it's the least favorite of the shows. Well, I, yeah, it's just, I didn't, I, yeah, I can't even argue. It's right? Like, I can't argue. I mean, it's the least. And people have tried to say, why do you say that uh, Supergirl is the least? It As a whole, it's just the least of the shows. And listen, I am all about social issues. 
they are fucking heavy the fuck handed. Oh my with god, this first episode. So listen, I I agree. I don't with even you. want to get into it. No, no, I just no, no, want no, to I'm say not, they not, are. No, I'm just saying. I'm not gonna get fully in depth to it. I know that every show within Greg Berlanti's control, that Berlanti verse, those four, because Black Lightning is in its own separate universe. Those four will always focus on societal issues. And I get that. I get that part of art is to deal and 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 address yeah, those as comedians. Beats but you over the head with it in it the season is, premiere. It is not subtle and it is <laughs> fucking heavy handed. I'm it like, is super I get it. Listen, I agree with all the shit you're saying. More punchy, punchy. That's what I'm saying. I get it. I listen to the news. I work at a news station. I listen to that shit every single day. I agree with all the things you're saying about gay people and racists and and Alien, media legal and, aliens. and all of that. Mm. Guess what? Less talky talky, more punchy punchy. That's what I'm naming this fucking episode. For you, less talky talky, more punch. I I agree though, man. So yeah, I I feel you. So all Andy, right. I think Andy. we I think we talked about everything in nerd news for this past week. And caught up on everything. Uh, that, oh wait. This is still the sex jokes and rock and roll. Yes, show, it is. So yes, we haven't talked rock and roll yet. Oh, my apologies. Um, the 2019. Okay, we've gotten out of the the nerdy part of that. Um, the 2019 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees uh, nominees, I should say, have uh, have been announced by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year. Nominated: Def Leppard, who I just saw, and they were fucking great. Uh, Devo, Janet Jackson. Oh my girl, Janet Jackson. Best Janet Jackson song. Go. Control. Black Panther, or Black Tiger, Black Cat. Okay. Black Cat. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's about- Sorry, I had Black Panther on. Oh, your brain. <laughs> also, Escapade, one of my favorites. Yes, that is my jam. Escapade, we'll have a good time. Escapade, leave all your worries behind. That just happened. Yep. yep. Uh, John. Oh, why is this? Not John soon? Prine. John Prine, Kraftwerk, LL Cool J. About mm. time. Ladies love cool It's about jams. time for Janet as well. Uh, Radiohead, MCS, Rage Against the Machine. Really? Rage is up for this year's? Uh, it's been 25 years at least. Uh, Roxy Music, Rufus featuring Shaka Khan. Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks, The Cure, The Zombies, and Ted or Todd Rundgren. All um, uh, potential inductees. They're all nominees for the 2019 That's crazy Rock because Hall of Fame. You, when you hear that, you're like, oh, all of them get in. Like, no. No. You can vote, and actually, it is your obligation as a music fan, and I nay, I say a rock fan, to vote. And you can go uh, by going to the sexjokesandrockandroll.com website, sexjokesandrock.com, sexjokesandrockandroll.com. It's actually— I'm looking at sexjokesrock.com. Here's the thing. I bought every All combination. <laughs> so if you go to sexjokes.com, sexjokesrock.com, or sexjokes n rock and roll.com or sex jokes and rock and roll or any fucking combination thereof i spent a lot of money to buy all those if you go to any of those it'll take you to the same fucking website so sex jokes and rock and roll.com hysterical um, uh you can, uh, you can click on the link to the uh, rock and roll hall of fame nomination page uh you can go vote or you can go right to the link at uh, rockhall.com slash vote uh, you can log in and you can vote for who you want to go in the Hall of Fame. I'm going for Def Leppard, LL Cool J, Stevie Nicks. I think Janet can hold off. Really? I think Janet. I think Janet years. deserves it. I think here's the thing: Janet's ever since the titty, Janet's uh, kind of been. I'm gonna do that for real. Listen, Stevie Nicks still making music. Def Leppard still selling out arenas. LL Cool J still licking his lips. <laughs> <laughs> licking his lips, oh fucking NCIS. <laughs> Janet has not done anything. Janet is a mama now. Yeah, LL Cool J is probably fathering some babies. I don't know. He got like five kids. Right. Here's the thing. She's been, I think, musically, she's been out of it for a few years. I think... I think with Stevie Nicks is still on tour. She's still out with Fleetwood Mac. Def Leppard's still selling our arenas. LL Cool J. I think for me, the people who I'm going to vote for, it's not who I think totally deserves. Yeah, it's who me. you're going to vote. It's for. Who yeah. I'm going to vote for. I think those are the groups I'm voting for have had and still have the longest lasting impact on music and are still viably doing something. I saw Def Leppard sell out two 
shows in a row at the Forum two weeks ago. In 2018, the band has been playing for 40 years. Okay, I can see. Now, they, 40, yes. Every two weeks, when I'm playing with my band, I got all I got to do is play one lick. That is the ho kryptonite. That I start playing that intro riff to pour some sugar on me, and just like why would, and, you, why would you call it ho kryptonite? I would say ho catnip. It, because it it, it it kryptonite keeps people away. Okay, it is that pour some sugar on me is to hose as anger is to Bruce Banner. It brings out the <laughs> Hulk. That's how I should have said it. All right. Holy fuck. So Def Leppard, still viable. Stevie Nicks, still touring. LL Cool J, for some unknown reason, they still let him keep hosting award shows. Because he's lips, like you yeah. said. Because <laughs> he brings out them lips, and they're like, oh, we got to have LL. Um, the Cure, pro- yeah, I guess. Uh, uh, th- those are the, uh, I guess, I like Rage, but the uh, Yeah, like for me, it's got to be. Zombies, I'm like, huh? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's fine. We just played it. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. For me, those are the bands who still have a lasting impact and are still doing something now who have been doing for fucking... Stevie Nicks has been doing it since the fucking late 60s. Yeah, this is true. This and fucking LL Cool J's lips. Goddamn, I'm just voting for his lips. If there was a slot just for his lips, lips I would fucking waits. vote for it. His lips belong in their own Hall of Fame, ladies so and gentlemen. So go to sexjokesandrockandroll.com for, um, for that. Uh, to vote, uh, go to our website or go to our Twitter page or our Instagram at Sex Jokes. We'll do all that shit at the end. Um, 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 here's the thing I wanted to do. This is a new little segment um, that I wanted to try. I was going to try it with Rico, but he's not here. So we're going to try it with you. It's okay. something I like to call Come Sail Away. Now, if you're familiar with South Park, if you know, anytime Cartman hears any part of the stick song, Come Sail Away, he has to finish it. Yes. For you. Is there a come sail away? Is there a movie or a film or or a song or a something that when you're you see it comes on, you're like, oh shit, well I gotta Bust finish it. Bust around, put your hands where my eyes can see. All right. Anytime I hear do 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 I'll do, it I'll be in the middle it'll be in the middle of the song and I will pick it up right where it is. Okay. That is my song. Okay. Excellent. Why? In particular. I just it just love it. Like, yo, it's just something because the video was so dope. And it it just stuck with me, and I'm been a Busta Rhymes fan since Leaders of the New School. So. Okay, wrap it for me. Uh, shit, hold why why my brain's going like um, flip mode. Mm-hmm. 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 Do I have to YouTube this shit? What? Do I have to YouTube this shit? Yeah, because I'll go with it with YouTube. That's crazy, because like my brain, I guess because I'm just got put on the spot. But like my brain will go with it if it's on the, you know, saying as soon as it's playing. I hate the fact that this is happening to me, ladies and gentlemen. My black card is under review. Yep, goddamn right. I'm gonna need to take a take a stamp to that. Uh, let's see. Put bust, your hands. Bust it. Bust it. That's the second one. Put your hands where I can see. Yeah, I can do it to this. With no problem. You can no, skip the skip the goddamn ads. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wrap this with a band next week. Check me out. Hit you with no delay. And so what you saying, yo? Silly with the nine milli with the dilly, yo. When I be on the mic, yes, I do my duty, yo. While up in the club like we while in the studio. All right, stop. Don't I, don't have to, I don't have to pay royalties for this. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it happens. When I hear it, I ain't even got to hear the lyrics. I can just hear the beat and go with it. All right. If you have a come sail your way, come sail, come sail away. Tweet at us at Sex Jokes Rock. Um, all right, that's the show. All right, so before I get up, this has been the show. It's been a great show. What do you have coming up, and how can people reach you? How do I have coming up? Shit, I don't know, man. You're going um, to get inducted into another museum. Yeah, my third. Oh, well, it's well tell how people can reach you then. Because uh, your schedule is so weird. Oh. Tell people how they can reach you and find out more uh, about you. Go to my website, tomtran.com. Uh, <laughs> T-H-O-M-T-R-A-N.com. I spell it with an H. However... I just finally bought TomTran.com. T-O-M, tar- yeah. Even though that's not how I spell it. But it's just to make sure it makes yeah, it easy. And it'll just forward to my website. Uh, my Instagram's underscore TomTran, T-H-O-M, T 
Tr Ann. I just fucking forgot my name. Same with uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook dot com slash real Tom Tran because there's some fake motherfuckers out there and with a real one please stand up that's me um T H O M T R A N uh where am I gonna be I'm gonna be in Ohio this week for the U S Veterans Memorial and Museum opening um uh, my uh that's it I don't have anything on the books I mean I got a bunch of corporate stuff coming up Veterans Day is coming up so um. For for the people who listen to Jay's podcast who don't know, I am uh, I'm a stand up comedian. I'm a combat veteran of the U.S. Army. I I play in a rock band. I play in like three rock bands. I work on the radio here in Los Angeles, and I'm a veterans advocate. And um, I do a lot of work for uh, DoD and and the Army. Uh, and Veterans Day is coming up, so it is typically my busiest time of year. Like I. I think I, I've got a, a gig in Portland on November 7th, and then two days later I'm flying to South Carolina uh, for another gig right before Veterans Day, and then I've got some Veterans Day events. I always have Veterans Day stuff coming up. So go to my website, tomtran.com, T-H-O-M-T-R-A-N.com, uh, .com for tour dates and all that. Um, I'm in the Los Angeles. I live in Los Angeles, so I do the Laugh Factory and the Levities and all that around here. But uh, as always, I want to thank my Patreon sponsors and supporters, Emily Cheek, Eric Varela, Lee Cutler, James Overt, Reach Advantage MMA, Robert Miller, Scott Napier, and Stanley uh, Lisa Hill. Thank you guys. Uh, I would thank more Patreon patrons, but those those are all my Patreon patrons. So uh, if you want to help support the show, if you want to help grow the show, um, uh, if you've heard recently, it sounded better because we got these new microphones in the studio thanks to our Patreon sponsors and supporters. Uh, there, there's different levels of support. You can chuck in a buck. You can just toss a dollar a month to support, five, ten, uh, whatever. There are different levels. You get different uh, swag and merch for that. Um, also, if you are a Patreon sponsor starting uh, who starts in November, I have a special Christmas gift for all my Patreon sponsors, which I will be sending out to you guys, uh, as long as I have your addresses, uh, in December. I'm actually getting all the, all the stuff, stuff. What's that stuff called? Tape, tape, and packaging <laughs> together. <laughs> Fuck, man. Um, I'm getting that stuff together, so I'll be sending those out right before Christmas as a thank you uh, for being a Patreon sponsor. Again, patreon.com slash Tom Tran, T-H-O-M-T-R-A-N. Uh, Rico will be back. I don't fucking know when Rico's going to be. I, I have no <laughs> idea. Like, it is between me being sick and him having a real life and a career, I we haven't been able to link up. So, uh, But I will have more guests on the show. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram. We already did those. The interwebs. Uh, Jay, where can yes. people find you? So everybody who knows, you can find me, Mr. Jay Washington, on Twitter and Instagram. That's M-R-J-A-Y. You should know how to spell Washington. This upcoming week. But spell it for the people who don't know. W-A-S-H-I-N-G-T-O-N. This upcoming week, I will be at L.A. Comic Con. I am doing a bunch of panels on Friday. Uh on the tw- oh yeah, on the, sorry, not Friday. On Saturday, I'm doing three different panels. The first one I'm doing is the Kaiju's versus Big Robots panel. The second one I'm doing is the Battle of the Green Lanterns. The third one I am doing is Comics on Comics. And Sunday, I'm doing the By God Wrestling Podcast All Star Hour. You can also make sure you follow me on my YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com/slash Jay Washington eight zero and check out the Wrestling Compadre Slamcast on Dragon Wagon Radio with myself. Got Narver, Dale Rutledge, and Johnny LaQuasto, and the occasional Jake Lloyd. I had a Patreon, but nobody wanted to subscribe to it. Wait, Jake Lloyd from Star Wars? Not that Jake Lloyd, All no. Right, fuck it, I don't uh, care that. <laughs> nobody wanted to subscribe to my Patreon, so I just got rid of it. Did you know that my dining room table used yes. to belong to from, Boba from, Fett? Yeah, I remember, I remember I have, when it came in. I have Boba Fett's dining room table. So yeah, this, Suck it, bitches. <laughs> thank you, Tom, for being allowing us to do this crossover together, man. This is a fun one. It's always fun when we get to talk shit, speculate, and... I think you're going to be on a lot because this time of year you're always on a lot because we have a lot of nerd shit happening. And the crossover comes up in December, so that's like next you'll, month. You'll be back for the crossover. Yeah, I'll be back for the crossover, so we'll definitely be doing ah, All right, cool. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, subscribe, hit the like, uh, leave a comment, uh, rate it five stars. Apparently that helps. From I've talked to other yes, podcast people. Yes, it does. Rate, on, subs- rate and subscribe uh, on rate iTunes. Rate and, make, and subscribe on iTunes. Makes the visibility much higher for both of these podcasts. So uh, thanks a bunch, and we'll talk to you next time.